This mask here, this is uh, stamped right on it, KN95, and it looks just like this mask here, which says also stamped uh, KN95 GB2626-2006, which is the test data that they use. I mean, they look nearly identical. This one provided like 99% uh, in mask use, so that's like filtration efficiency plus my face and all that. This one was about 65%. How would you know as an individual, if you didn't go have a test equipment to know this, how would you know that these are the different? As the information about COVID came out that it might be aerosol, uh, it kind of came evident to me that this is kind of a classic case that you would learn about in sort of your aerosol 101 class with SARS-CoV-1. And I kept finding all these things on Amazon and eBay and kind of random, you know, internet searches about face masks. And I started buying them and I was unsure if they were any good. And, and my wife was kind of like, why don't you just test them? Like, isn't, isn't that what you do for a living? And I kind of dawned on me like, oh yeah, I guess, I guess I could do that. My background is in aerosol science with my master's looking at ultrafine particle loss in aerosol diluters. So this really nerdy aerosol kind of <laughs> apparatus. I did happen to have a lot of that equipment. And so I kind of just kind of started creating this YouTube series where I test a bunch of face masks. All right, back again for some more mask tests. Uh, today we got a whole slew of tests. Uh, I got a whole box full of about 12 different masks. Uh, filtration efficiency for this mask was 99%, 84.5%, 67.4%. So not much better than this cloth mask. In mask world, there's kind of two things that we care about. And almost all mask standards are tested for this. One, you need to have good filtration and it needs to be kind of easy to breathe through because in the end of the day, like the whole job is like, it's going over your face. So if you can't breathe while wearing this mask, it really doesn't do you very good. The the blow test, the flame test, the, the water test, you'll see all these kind of weird tests that people try to use to distinguish. And they're all meaningless because I can make a, you can make a face mask meet all those specs and still be fake. And I have real masks that failed that standard. So it doesn't mean anything. It just means whether a mask can hold water or whether you can blow out a candle while wearing the mask. That's all it tests. So if, if you're a consumer looking for a protective face mask, the FDA published an emergency use authorization. And they have a list of face mask suppliers that are accepted to them as being of high quality. Outside of that, it gets very difficult. There's no way of knowing right now. I think it's hard to say who's doing a good job and who's not doing a good job uh, just by their website, because you can make a really cool, very fancy looking website. Um, so what I always look to do is make sure that if they're registered at, for that Emergency Youth Authorization Act, and then go straight to a, an official distributor. They should say, I'm official distributor for this. They'll have to use like, some documentation or some information behind it that's gonna qualify them to know that they're directly importing from one manufacturer. And that's specifically in the KN95 space.